So here's the rear of the house and you can see we have a large section of gutter. It all feeds to this downspout right here. And then we go into a rain reserve. I'm taking that water traveling over here. Then going down through the basement window. It was nice and easy to drill right through the aluminum frame and then you seal it up with the finger caulk to make sure there's no bugs and the weather get in there. The other side I have a another line that leads to this. Oh, there's another in reserve. So that's the second of four. This one goes up to another gutter portion right here. And then here's the second entry point. You can see this one I had to go through the masonry, so it took a little while. If you have a hammer drill, uh, definitely recommend you pick one of those up. Make the job a lot easier. And here's the third rain reserve. I always like to put the clear tubing right here. That way you can see if it's blocked up, clear any debris out. And then uh, you can see this long line that I have here. I clamp it to the siding with some of those half clamps. Um, that goes up to the last rain reserve in front of the house. Alright, so we've gone in the house now from the outside. You can see we go through here. Now I insulate the pipe, that way the condensation in the wintertime won't cause water to build up in the house. Uh, you have the warm air in the house, cold air, cold water coming in, that would create dripping, which you don't want. So we put the foam insulation on there. We can see here there's another, there's a T right here, and this is where I have the other two rain reserves. So two rain reserves come in on this pipe, and two, the water from the other two rain reserves come in from this pipe. So a total of four units. They combine and go through this marine filter right here. In order to clean the basket filter, I usually hit this shutoff valve, put the off position. You, this one is not really necessary to turn off, but you can if you want to. Then you go ahead and just unscrew this. And the inside you'll see there is actually some uh, plant and roofing material that does filter through the rain reserve. Uh, the rain reserve itself does do a good job at filtering out, but you just want to make sure that you catch all the debris in something like this. Don't just feed it right into a barrel. You'll have debris start to build up in your barrel, which is not ideal. So after the filter, we're going to go into the barrel. I'm going through this this hole right here. And you, you can kind of see, I'll take the insulation away, but we just tap right into that with the brass fitting. And you can see down the bottom here we've got the outlet, and all the outlets are the same on all these barrels. This is a six barrel setup. Then at the end we have a, a purge valve in case you want to fill a bucket of water or just clean, clean the system out. So we're at the exit of our first barrel and you see that I have the shutoff valve, a check valve, then we go up this insulated pipe, a shutoff valve right here, and then we go to the, the filter. Now this secondary filter is what is a, tw is a 20 micron. This will keep any particulate out of your system, out of your pump. Um, don't run any dirt or contaminants through the pump. Now here's the heart of the system. You've got the well pump. You can see here we're going in. We've got a pressure gauge. Here's the pressure box. You can adjust the pressure in there if you want to. This one's set to turn on at 20 and turn off at 50. Uh, you got a, a, a tank right here that will hold 
water, that way the pump is not constantly cycling. We'll go ahead and exit the pump. Another shutoff valve. We go up. And we got our manifold. Uh, now right here, I put an extra couple half inch fittings in case I want to add some sort of plumbing appliance in the future. Uh, but then here are my three main feeds. This one goes over to the toilets and the front house garden hose. This one goes to the washing machine and this one goes to the rear hose. Okay, so here's one of the toilets and you can see this is the city water. I installed a shark bite ball valve here. Right now it's in the off position. And then up here is the water coming from that pump the rainwater pump and you see I have that in the on position and then I have a T that goes up to the toilet so this way right now obviously I'm using the rainwater as my toilet water supply but if I wanted to I could uh, turn just the city water on so it's nice to have that option okay here's the front hose and you can see I did the same thing as the toilet I've got the rainwater coming in the blue line into a ball valve a T and then here's the city water that's in the off position so again the front hose right now being fed with the rainwater tap but if you want to you can turn the rainwater off and turn on the city water but we all know that plants like having the rainwater rather than the processed city water now you'll notice some um, piping on the top of each tank this this piping here is used for a vent so as you drain water out of the system the air needs to go in and as you put water in the system air needs to go out so this drain here is merely an air pipe and this actually goes up to the top of the stairwell so if we go around here see how it goes up and you need to make sure that the top of this pipe is higher than your rain reserve. As the system fills up the water will accumulate up here however it will not go higher than the rain reserve. The rain reserve will overflow the water back into the gutters if the system fills up. Okay electrically I already had power here so I just installed a couple junction boxes. Right here we have the top the top switch controls this whole outlet, the whole box. So when that's when that's on, like it is now, the GFCI outlet is activated. The bottom switch I have controlling only the float valve circuit. So the float valve is what we see down here, and that's shown in the pictures. But when that level of water gets below there, the float valve will close the circuit activates this time delay relay which I got on eBay for only like I don't know 15 bucks that will hold this solenoid valve which is connected over here open for a variable amount of time from 1 to 10 minutes I have it set in about 1 minute right now so this water is coming in from the city so that pipe there goes back to the city water when this valve opens, it goes through a check valve and then into the barrel until this float switch is satisfied. The purpose of having the city water go into the rain barrels is to make the system automated. I'm not looking to have to monitor the rainwater. Uh, I don't want to have to be coming down here to change valves so you know right now we just had a full rain the barrels are full but in the summertime I expect the rain to diminish a little bit and then you know I might need to supplement with some city water so this will do that automatically but not use more city water than I need to keep all of my toilets washing machine and hoses satisfied in those dry months when you're shopping for a solenoid valve, uh, the one I chose is a 
three quarter inch Viton seal. Uh, again, this is a nice you know thirty forty dollar online item. And then you got to make sure you have a check valve because if the system does fill up completely with rainwater, the rainwater will collect and go up this tube, and you you don't want to contaminate uh, the city water with your rainwater. Although it's clean, it's not you know it's not sanitary, so you, this this is a must. Another note is if you can find a piece of plywood, it's a lot easier to mount that against the wall and then mount your components to the plywood. Uh, drilling a lot of holes into masonry is not something you want to be doing. When you're shopping for ball valves, I recommend that you go with the barb type Zern. They're less expensive than getting sharp bites. You'll save four or five dollars a valve, and if you get them in bulk, even more. So to review the float switch, the switch over here, right here, and the timer delay off relay are wired in series. Uh, you have the AC power going directly to the relay and I also drilled some holes in the cover here so you can see the LED when it's on and then be able to adjust the timer in there with the pot switch that's on the PCB board. Okay, so I just flushed the toilet upstairs and you'll see that the pressure is dropping because it's, it's sucking the rainwater out of the expansion pipe. Now you can hear the pump turn on. The pressure will build back up to about 40, 50 PSI and then it'll shut off again. So you can see the system really does not use a lot of power. I calculated that it's only about two dollars the entire year to run this system. Okay, so here we have the washing machine hookup, and we can see you have the blue rainwater pipe coming from the basement. Uh, my washing machine happens to be in a garage. Uh, I've got a Y splitter, and this valve here means that it's on. This city water valve has been turned off. Uh, I've been using a washing machine for the last couple weeks only with the rainwater. Um, the hot water is fed over here just the way it used to be but I, I tend to do my clothes only in cold. Some of the benefits of washing your clothes in rainwater is you can use less detergent, it's softer, and uh, of course the obvious you don't have to pay for, pay for the water.